Welcome to Three Devs and a Maybe, the podcast series for beginner web developers and general web enthusiasts. Now, introducing your show hosts Michael Budd, Fraser Hart, Lewis Keynes, and Ed Mann. Good afternoon, stroke morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Three Devs and a Maybe. Um, it's an absolute pleasure to present the story today because we have a very, very special guest. Uh, one of my favorite listeners, sorry, my favorite actual listener of the show. No offense to everyone else. Uh, we have Jimmy <laughs> Burrell. Is it Burrell or Burrell? Burrell? Sorry, I've been calling you Jimmy Burrell, but. That, that will, that's close enough. Yes. Bure- How would you Burrell. Say <laughs> Burrell. Okay. We'll, we'll go with Burrell. Okay. So Jimmy Burrell. He's, yeah, he's a, a listener of the show and an absolute legend. And, uh, yeah, we've, we've got him on to talk about a, a product that he's been, he's been working on. So that's, that's really cool. Uh, we've also got Ed. Hello. And we have Mickey. Hello, everyone. Hello. And, uh, Lewis is at another Michael Bublé concert. So, uh, he can't be with us today. <laughs> 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 Bless him. He does like his oh, Michael Bublé. Fantastic. But anyway, uh, so yeah, if I go left to right, because we've got you on my left, Ed, and then we've got Jimmy in the middle, and then we've got Mickey on the right. So how about we go Ed, Mickey, and then we can spend a lot of time talking to, to Jimmy. Sounds great. Yeah. Very so, well organized. Mickey, good work. Good work. Good week, even. I've had a so, beer. <laughs> I was thinking, I saw the beer, and I was like, yeah, I've had a beer. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you were starting with me. Is that right? Yes. Was, you're yeah, going okay. for it. Oh, yeah, we'll start with you. I said Ed, but we'll start with you. Yeah, okay. Um... Yeah, um, busy week at work, just still working on that same project, so I won't bore you with those details. But uh, other than that, um, I caught up the two films I've wanted to watch for about six months now, and um, finally got a chance to see them. So I watched The Theory of Everything, which is the Stephen Hawking movie, yeah. which was insanely good. And I Did also it have watched... any information on like his mis- not his mistress, his maid beating him up on there? No, <laughs> that was the I, I forgot all about that, actually. Yeah. Um, no, no, that nice wasn't lady. on there. <laughs> yeah, across well, um, but that was insane. That is a must-watch film, honestly. Yeah. It really is. And uh, isn't Kira Knightley in that as well? Yeah. Oh, hang on. No, Kira Knightley was in the Imitation Game. I'm getting confused yes. now. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. With, with yeah, Benedict so, Cumberbatch. Yeah. Thought. So yeah. you kind of like um, yeah. That's what the next film I was going to mention, which is again another must-see film. And uh, well, I know Ed's already seen it, but the Imitation Game. It, as for, if you're a computer scientist yeah. or you know work in programming, you've got to watch it. So you're saying you've got like the Alan Turing, Stephen Hawking like merged together, you know? But, yeah, it definitely, that, that's what you want, that you know, the merge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, but it's interesting. But um, I mean, like I say, the, pretty much every module I've done, like Alan Turing's name comes up. He's he's that big a deal, and uh, yeah, like at the end of the film, it says I like, think like the work he did saved 14 million people, and and the, the film doesn't try and portray him as a saint, but. Um, it, again, just a must-watch film. So uh, I don't want to hijack the podcast, but sometimes it'd be good to talk about that anyway. So uh, yeah, that's my my week really. Awesome. How about you, Ed? Uh, it'd be very good. Yeah, uh, pretty standard week to be honest. Uh, work-wise, just doing a lot of clean up and stuff like that. A lot of work on like the mainly front-end stuff, mainly Twig files and stuff like that. So no job, a bit of JavaScript stuff, but mainly just yep. Twig and cleaning stuff up. Um, in my own time, actually, I was speaking to Joe Watkins a bit about because there's an interesting kind of debate where so it's it come complete sidetrack. But particularly like on Adam Wathen's podcast with DHH, Daniel Hanemir Hansen, they were talking about how Ruby, um, you know, testing kind of can complicate your design. And with Ruby, it's like, well, you know, we don't know dependency injection. We don't care. You know, we're able just to monkey patch stuff, which is pretty much say, don't be like that anymore. Be like this. Um, at, at runtime so one of the things that was is a very like simple contrived example is say like i have a system that uh, you know deb- that depends on time so you know i need to know what the time is now uh and what we would do say in a very oop way would we would be like okay well the instance of say date time now we'll pass into this you know whatever service or whatever we're going to be using for it. And then that means then in testing, we can just stub it. We can do anything we want. We can manipulate time and say, oh, if it's at this time, then we do this. The Ruby way is to just say monkey patch it and let's just change it. Let's just change what the time is for the whole thing for now. And that can't actually happen in the PHP runtime at the moment 
But what can happen is I noticed there was a couple of um, actual uh, extensions for PHP, like one called Time Cop, which is very similar to Ruby's one, and one Time Traveler, which actually used that aspect oriented program, which is very cool to do it. But one of the things was uh, Joe Watkins had made a you defined, it's called UOPS, and actually it's able to, uh, it's really cool for testing. It's able to actually rewrite functions in like at runtime. So you can actually redefine what exit does. And you can say exit now instead of actually exit in the program, which is horrible for testing, just maybe returns false or maybe, you know, is a no-op. Uh, but in, in this case, what I was able to do was say like, okay, so now I want to date time freeze. So anytime you make get an instance of new time, new date time, it actually just, spec- you know, it will rewrite it to then do the work that I want to do, which is just set it to this time, ignoring what they wanted. So yeah, completely off the side track. But yeah, it's very cool. Shows that PHP can be used for everything. Yeah. <laughs> Craig Joe. So Jimmy. Yes. How are you doing? Oh, doing well. Thank Good. You so very much. yeah, so you've just released host signals. Yes. Can you give us a, a run actually no, give us a rundown of your, your background if you could. And like okay, as in sure. your, your development background, how you got into development, what your current job stroke business interests are at the moment, and then uh, we'll we'll go in and have a little delve into host signals if that's all right. Glad to, yeah, sure. Perfect. Uh First, first got into development. Oh, gosh, almost as soon as I got into computers, which was back during the Commodore 64 days. Oh, same very uh, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> I know from uh, listening to previous episodes, Fraser, that, that you got your start there as well. Absolutely. And, uh, oh, yeah, there was nothing better than 64K of RAM and Microsoft Basic on the old Commodore Blue 64 screen. So, yeah, started re-implementing. Uh, did not know I was re-implementing, but, uh, you know, figuring out bubble sorts and uh, all kind of funky algorithms and, and later learned that, hey, other people already know how to do these things. And, uh, yeah, finally going up to uh, university here as uh, Mississippi State University and uh, got into, you know, computer programming in a formal way. And then out in the workplace, so uh, one thing led to another, and the next thing you know, it's Visual Basic 6, and uh, uh, and then along came the Mac and the open source world, and uh, that's how I got into PHP. Yep. In fact, I got into PHP with the uh, job I am currently working at, which is a small advertising agency, and uh, I've been there for about 11 years, and... Um, Mainly I work on the back end, um, PHP on the back end with MySQL and yep. do their, uh, most of their heavy lifting, uh, database work. There's some other back end guys, but uh, I guess yep. you could say I specialize in the database area. Yeah. And what kind of clients do you have at the agency there? Are they, is it a kind of varied, a varied bunch or? Uh, it's really actually a very niche, um, it's a very niche market. We, cater specifically to the transportation industry and even more specifically to recruitment advertising. Mm-hmm. So all of our customers are carriers, yep. freight carriers. Fantastic. So, but it's, yeah. It, and is that, is that when I first you? heard that, I was, was like, and you make a business out of just <laughs> <doing> that? <laughs> And is that by but, design or is it just kind of like word of mouth as, as stuff does? Because I know the business that we all used to work for, we kind of, the business got its kind of foothold in with, in the fishing industry because it was kind of like we, we developed a, a fishing website, a, a website for a fishing company and then other fishing companies kind of came to us through there. And that was, that was how that all, all kind of developed. Is it a similar thing or did you, did you guys specifically go, go after that industry? Uh, they actually specifically did go after that industry. Yeah. Uh, the business started up a few years before I came along, but uh, that's the way they tell the story. Yeah, fantastic. So, host signals. This is something you've developed in in your free time, and it is. Yes, and uh, and in doing so, you learn how much free time you do not have. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I always find the same. Whenever I try and work on a project for myself or or for friends or something like that, you kind of realize that. Actually, yeah, all this time that I kind of like, I think that I have, there's, there's no actual time to sit there and do any dev. And by the time you kind of sit down, it takes an hour to get into the project. And then just right. as you get into the flow, it's like you look at your watch and oh, I should be in bed by now because I've got to be up at seven in the morning. Uh, got exactly. the day job as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So true. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, 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 like all good programming projects, it started with one of those programmer itches that you yep. just really want to scratch. Mm-hmm. And, uh, actually, 
I figured that I, I can kill two birds with one stone here because I've got an idea. It's over on the Windows platform, which is really unusual for me because yep. I've been a Mac guy for so long now. Yeah, I was going to say, that's very unusual because you were saying that you kind of got into your current realm of programming through through Macs and, and the open source community, and then you obviously you've developed yeah. this for Windows. How, how was that, or was it was it simple to, to pick up? Or Well, <clears throat> it was more simple than I feared. Yeah. Uh, I had been in the Microsoft programming camp years and years ago and uh, with Visual Basic and the whole Visual Studio IDE, which I know Ed is a fan of. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, Visual Studio, I have to say, is still king. It, was, it made it easy to come back into C Sharp after being in the PHP world. I, I, it is amazing how much different programming languages are converging and uh, – you know, adding all of the same data structures, you name it. So, yeah, it made it much easier than I feared to come back to C-sharp. But, yes, it was ironic, kind of. Uh, you know, Microsoft has been pivoting lately, and they are really doing m magical things almost for Microsoft in the open yeah. source community. And so hearing all of these things, you kind of go, well, you know, I'm over here in open source, but wow. Look what yeah. Microsoft is actually doing. They're, they're yeah. actually changing. I'm really excited by, yeah, the HoloLens thing that Microsoft is doing at the moment. Oh, yeah. It, just, it looks so cool. Like, what I just want to get to have one of those. Oh, you've never seen that. Right. No, what is this? It's like, it's the coolest thing ever. Ah. It's kind of like a VR headset, but it kind of, in, it superimposes your workspace on, on the real world. So you can look up at your wall and you'll see your clock up there. That and you can look up at kind of another crazy. wall and there'll be your TV screen on there and you can get stuff to follow you through so the house. So it would just be a white room that you'd be in. It would just be no, this white room. No, it just works with whatever environment you're, you're But you could just in. be like yeah. sat in the middle of a white room just looking around. Oh, you yes, could. You've got yes, yeah. <laughs> just, yeah, just as easily you could be sat oh, in your living room and you could say, that would be great. my actual flat screen oh. TV's there, so, but I want to drag this window and put it above my flat screen TV. So every time you look back at the flat screen TV, like you've yeah. got this this kind of window that you've put up there into six cycle. Yeah, check out the videos on online. So yeah, I'll put that oh in yeah, there. yeah, you've got to. So it's no need to buy an eighty inch screen TV yeah. head. Just <laughs> yeah, just yeah. get the hollow lens. <laughs> Absolutely. Then you yeah. can get on Netflix and you can have a TV as big as your wall. That is exactly yeah. it. Yeah. I want to yeah. change it. Do you want to do a makeover? No, it's okay. I'll just do it now. There you go. Job yeah. done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Sorry, Jimmy. Right. I, 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 yeah, I jumped on that a bit too fast. No, Sorry, no, I got really no. excited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, oh yeah. Really excited about the hollow lens and uh, and. It's just another reason. It make, makes me kind of glad I'm getting back to the Microsoft platform yep. at least a little bit. Yep. So, uh, but yeah, um, I mean, I guess you could say I was uh, born and raised on Windows and then uh, left to go on to the Mac side for a while. And I've been a Linux fan ever since reading um, uh, Clifford Stoll's Cuckoo's Egg. Have you ever read that book? No. no. Oh, yeah. Highly recommended. It came out whew, late 80s, mid 80s, maybe. Yeah, mid 80s. And, um, it really set me on fire for Unix. It's, uh, it's really a worthy book worth reading. And so, uh, yeah. So when I went over to the Mac platform, boy, I, I was just head over heels in love with everything Unix, Linux and Unix and, but yeah, Microsoft has really been uh, coming on strong. So the scratch I needed to itch was, uh, I do HTML, CSS, JavaScript on the Mac and on Linux, but every now and then, you know, that problem just comes along that you really can't troubleshoot down to the nitty gritty unless you're on a Windows platform. Yeah. And so uh, you got to get over there and hit F12 and Internet Explorer and find out <laughs> what it. kind of crazy thing Internet Explorer is <laughs> doing. Tools, yeah. <laughs> and so uh, that led me to just getting so tired of booting up Vagrant and VirtualBox and everything and going so slow. So I said, you know, there, there's got to be a better way. So I did a local install of Apache and... After that, that that improved things a good deal, but I was still uh, spending so much time creating virtual host config files mm -hmm. for Apache, and uh, and I said, you, you know, after looking at what was available on GitHub and around for uh, current solutions and searching the commercial market too, there's just just a a uh, what's that word, Darth Dearth, uh, yeah. just a lack of tools. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that was the itch then. I had to write one after that. That's cool. 
And I like on your website as well, because I looked at the website today. I, I don't have a Windows machine, so I was unfortunately unable to to kind of test test it out. But I like how you're the kind of motto of do one thing and do it well. Yeah, the Unix philosophy there. Yeah. Love it. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And I, and I love the fake uh, the build kill yeah. Bill Gates would say. <laughs> I thought that was so good. <laughs> <laughs> I think Code Kit did it as well, didn't it? With their um, oh, I can't remember. They're like Jimmy. Yeah, I, that's right. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so funny. That's where I saw it, and uh, I said, not to copy those guys, but I said, um, you know, I know that I want to have some attributions, some quotes on my yep. site, but obviously it's brand new, and I don't have any yet. And I so I said. What can I put there for you know? And so that's what I wound up brilliant. doing. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> but but actually, you know, I want to replace those Ed with a quote from you and a yeah, quote from absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I'll happily give you, know, you, you guys. Quote, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I've been, yeah, I mean, I've been playing with it for the last couple of days now, and I've really enjoyed it. Yeah, really interesting product. And and I mean, one of the things actually I was going to ask is. So the ecosystem, um, like how how much of the Windows platform have you done like in the past, and how much has it changed? Because you know, so oh, BB6 yeah. and stuff like that, and exactly, yeah, that that was about the time I left the Microsoft platforms uh, was uh, the VB6 era toward the end, and uh, really never looked at VB.net all that much, and uh, and so just coming back to C Sharp, it was it was really like a breath of fresh air, you know. Microsoft was kind of dragging us into object orientation back during the VB6 days. Some of us kicking and screaming. That's exactly and the kicking and screaming. <laughs> some of us, we didn't even know we were being drugged into it. And uh, so, um, yeah, yeah, really, coming back to C Sharp was kind of like, wow. Microsoft they done, They've has, actually done a good job. Yeah, is it, yeah they, is it, they yeah. really have. Yeah. No, I absolutely agree with you there. And and had you done C Sharp beforehand, before this project or product? No, you know, I looked at it, uh, looked at Mono, looked at uh, at it on the Mac platform. This was early days, to be fair, and on Linux. And uh, it just didn't get that excited about it. But probably Visual Studio, really, it just really helps. And coming back to the Microsoft platform and trying C Sharp with the aid of Visual Studio, you know, you, you're, you, you got all your dot prompts and, That's and it. all your fantastic debugging tools. And boy, it, it, they really do make it easy. They really do. They've just made this one product that works and it's because they can because obviously they own every bit of that, pro- of that application yeah, that's right. yeah, uh, yeah. and that ecosystem. And so you said uh, like your first language. So you play around with the Commodore 64 and it was basic, mm-hmm. I'm guessing, was your first language. Yeah, that's correct. And then, and then what did you move on from basic then? Did you get a job in ba- using basic or? N- well, yes, actually, I did write a couple of things before uni just for, you know, one offs for some some people I knew that that actually were on the Commodore 64 platform and in basic, but they, they were just really small things. I moved on from there and went into Pascal yes. at uh, uni. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, as I recall, it was the old UCSD Pascal back in those days. And that, But I used Turbo Pascal after, uh, after I got out of uni, or actually while I was still in uni, but moved on to C about the same time and... Then you know, looked at all kinds of other languages. But I, I'm a I'm a polyglot. I know I shouldn't be. I should be focusing. Ooh, I, I don't think I can. I, my mind doesn't work that way. I I, I need. I want to know. I get intrigued <laughs> about something. It's like well, now I need to look into yeah. this. So yeah, if I could if I could focus my mind on one thing, it'd be great. But I can't. <laughs> I've just learned to think. No, oh, that's know. me. Yeah, that's me. Sometimes <laughs> I think I need to uh, you know go to the that. ADHD adult. <laughs> <laughs> Classes or doctors or whatever, but yeah, so I dabble over in everything Python, Perl, uh, everything that's on the web platform almost. And uh, I haven't really dove off a great deal into the functional side. I've looked a little bit at Haskell, but uh, I, man, I'm thinking about checking out F Sharp now that I'm. Yeah, well, this has been on the .NET platform. You've now got yeah, the opportunity yeah. to, and even use that in your product that you've got now yeah. and just include it. It's just great, isn't it? Where you can have. Yeah, the, it really is. Hey, of course, a lot of people are doing functional stuff with C Sharp, but I, I haven't explored that either. Yeah, because I suppose with with the product you did, did how much like did you get to explore the C Sharp landscape? Like, did you get to use Link and stuff like that? Or uh, I am using a little Link, and uh, yeah, it, you would really be surprised. You wouldn't think, well, this is just a 
this is the way I thought of it at first. This is just going to be a GUI for you know, setting up a virtual host file for Apache. How hard can it be, right? That's what everybody says. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. And then this is the <laughs> You know, how, how much code can that actually entail? It, it can't be much. <laughs> and, the, and then, yeah, you, you, you start writing it. Wow, I need to do this. What? Wow, that's really going to take some thinking about a data structure. Should I do I that with something uh, a generic? Or, and yeah, you really can get stretched out pretty well. And then I guess like seven o'clock in the evening turns into two o'clock into the in the morning, and then three o'clock in the morning. Exactly. And you're like, oh, I should probably yeah. go to bed now, but I've got a day job to do. This yeah. is not going to help, is it? Oh, so true. So true. So how yeah. long was it? Was it from start to finish, from from concept to 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 releasing it? Like, was it a Believe it or not, I mean, I'm embarrassed to say, but I, it's been six months. I've no, that's that's working not embarrassing. That's that's for, 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 a, uh, for a quality product like that, it's it's yeah. not a huge uh, amount of time. It's yeah, yeah. It, uh, it, did you work uh, on it solely yourself, or did you have other other guys working with you? No, just just myself. And awesome. at, at first, I I said I really didn't think about releasing it commercially. Mm -hmm. I, I said, look, I'm just going to do this because. It's something I want to do. Mm. I know it will be useful for me, and you know, maybe I'll maybe I'll let a few of my friends share it yep. that I know have the same need. And of course, the further I went along, is man, this is in an incredibly insane amount of work. Yeah, and uh, so you start thinking then about well. Yeah, maybe uh, the old shareware days are gone, but but so maybe you know I'll will maybe I'll sell this. Yeah. No, major kudos as well for getting out because obviously, like it, you were saying, that it was a big drain. You weren't expecting it to take such a, a large amount of time. But there's there's a number of projects that I've started, and it's kind of it's you've realised even like a third of the way in, or a quarter of the way in, or a fifth of the way in. Actually, this is going to be way more work than I ever thought it'd be like. And then I just I ditch it, and then it's but absolute major kudos for sticking it out and, and doing it. I think it's awesome. It's going to yeah, that that was another part is I really wanted to ship something. I yeah, I haven't shipped anything and. Not, not for myself. One of the things that puts me off with these kind of projects, and like even with like some of the tutorials I, I write, is uh, it's kind of the fear of actually what will come back at you. And uh, I get a lot of people saying, "Oh, thanks for the tutorial. I've just done this. Uh, can you now help me with that?" And it's like <laughs> I feel like a really terrible human being when I say I really haven't got time. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but do you? Well, I told you the story yep. about when I get, when I had a phone call from some guy that had read my one of my blog posts. Did I? Did I, I think Maybe I must have mentioned it. Yeah, so I wrote a, a blog post on how to create a, an a Ajax contact form with with PHP and jQuery, and then there was a guy commented in in the comments of of the thing asking a question. So I kind of replied to that that day, and then he yeah. came back and asked another question. I couldn't get back to him for a couple of days, and then it was on a Friday or a Thursday or, or something at, like at night. This guy from Israel called me up, <laughs> like just as I'm going to sleep, like because he'd been onto onto my main website, which is like my business card site, and I, I used to list my phone number on there. I don't do that anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> yeah, so, so he called me up, and he's like, oh, yeah, my name's such and such. Uh, we've been chatting over the comments, and I was like, oh, I'm, I'm really sorry, but I don't have time to... This is super awkward. Why are you yeah. thinking of it? It's like, but yeah, like, it was, it was awesome that, like, in a way, it was really cool, and it was like, it, it gave me such a big head to know this guy from Israel that had read my stuff and actually thought to phone me to ask for my advice. I was like, I must be pretty cool. But <laughs> when you were a little bit scared that he would now I, I was a little bit scared, and, and it was kind it. of, yeah, I was just about to go to sleep as well, so I was like, oh, I really can't help right now. Um, I'll send you an email. So I sent him an email, and we cleared it out, but but I've just completely derailed that train again anyway, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. It just kind of reminds me, because I've got some issues, like I did a tutorial for uh, Stripe Payment, setting yep. that up and um, they've now changed their code base and they've introduced namespacing and they're like oh your tutorial is great but there's loads of people using it through Google getting it through oh. Google results and now uh, it no longer works with the latest code base and oh. can, I, can I change it and I'm like oh, I've got a 10 month year old boy you know UD work all the rest like, I really haven't got time so I, I think I'll either have to withdraw the tutorial or find the time to do that and that's I guess, and you know, that's just a tutorial, but thinking like what you've done, Jimmy, with like releasing a software product and then not to low mention, don't get me wrong, I'm sure your programming is, is superb, but like if you get any bugs, <laughs> that kind of stuff, you're then committed to fixing the bugs and uh, that's, it can start demanding a lot of your free time, I guess. Yes. Yes, you're absolutely right, Mick. And that's something to, uh, seriously consider and think about. And that, that's yeah. what I ultimately decided is if I'm going to put it out there, you know, there are bugs. 
There's yeah. <laughs> yeah. you can write two lines of code and have ten bugs. Yep. Yeah. But, uh, so I know there are, and uh, I'm I'm I have a small beta tester group, and and they're fantastic, and and they are finding bugs, have found bugs, and I've corrected those, and you know you're going yeah. to be involved with it. Every day for as long as you decide to That's keep it out there. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I suppose the thing is, have you got another itch now to scratch? Are you are you moving on to something else, or are you going to say I'm going <laughs> to stay on this for now? I'm happy I've released the product. I'm looking after this. It really is a challenge because, as we were just talking about, there are lots of interesting things and lots of paths that you can divert to. But uh, I am going to stick with this for <laughs> this is for this is a while. <laughs> enough for now. You know, yeah. yeah, I'm saying. <laughs> This and this alone. You shall code on this and this alone. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it becomes, it's like your baby now, right? I guess in the same way that Laravel is Taylor Rockwell's baby, you like, you want to make yes. sure everything's working perfectly, I guess. So it's, it's a labor of love at the end of the day. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. Well said. <laughs> <laughs> no, it well, looks like a really cool product though. I, again, I'm, you know, I'm a Mac user, but like when I was on Windows and, um, no, when using... we were back in our, you know, when we were in our old place at work, you know, yeah. we all had to use Windows, you know, machines. And mm. yeah, this is a lifesaver. And and I love the way that you've been able to integrate it with MAMP and XAMP and just Apache on its own. I think it's great. And that, that again, must have taken more time because you're then having to deal with these. De- I mean, how did you work that out, actually? Like, did did you kind of just go through testing like, oh, they normally install the paths here, just specify kind of default paths. And then if mm. you want to then go to another thing, you just have to display, you know, kind of configure it that way and... Yeah, well, sort of. I did start out that way. And then, yeah, thinking about all the alternate paths that you can select. And so I came up with a little search algorithm for uh, identifying those locations and things like that and, and integrating. So, But, yeah, you're right. It's it's work. That's it. And you have to try and each different pl- each different thing and then bringing them up. And yeah. I suppose there's and no the automated testing. way. Uh. Yeah, the testing for it. Yeah, because I suppose there's no way of automating these guys unless you've – I mean, you could kind of, yeah, you can never automate installing these products and you have to then know where they're installing things yeah. and how they're installing things and they're all slightly different, I'm sure, and trying to yes. neutralize it and everything. No, I think it's really, yeah, a lot of work. And for six months, I'm, I'm impressed. It's a great product for it, yeah. for the time yeah, frame. Yeah, absolutely, you. man. Um, one thing actually I really just wanted to ask as well was the, your C experience then. So, so how much split C did you do? And like, how do you find, do you, do you find you want to delve back into that today? Or do you like these higher languages that you're using? Yeah. <laughs> That's a good question, Ed. And, and what I would expect from you. Nice one, Ed. I do still love C and it's always a temptation to, to want to, uh, you know, just get back in and do a little something and, and refamiliarize myself with, uh, pointers and indirect pointers and indirect, uh, indirect pointers. Yeah, and, yeah. Star, star, yeah. star, 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 star. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, it is hard to be productive. I, it's always a temptation to, you know, get into some algorithm work. And, uh, I know that you in particular like that, <laughs> but, uh, but boy, uh, yeah, it's higher level languages for me these days. Well, that's it. And because they're helping you, I'm sure I said it before, it's like C's great for these things, but you wouldn't want to write it. The, you've, they've already written these languages on top of C yeah. to then make you more productive. <laughs> so that to go back and say, actually, I'm going to write everything to C. Like, I mean, the reason why PHP exists is because people didn't want to write web cert, you know, pe- applications right. in C. Right. You know, they wanted uh, this higher level. So, I mean, have you ever looked at like the C source code, the PHP source code and stuff like that? And yes. Yeah. In fact, yes. And, and you know, it, it is surprisingly, well, it's not surprisingly well written. It's, it's really well written. And um, it was surprising to me how how much I could understand, given my um, uh, absence from really hardcore C programming. But you reminded me of a story talking about higher level languages in C. Uh, I remember back during the Commodore 64 days, um, I was uh, programming an assembly a little bit on the 6502, but uh, I had found a C compiler for uh for the commodore 64 and uh, a buddy of mine uh that lived right down the road he was a big assembly language programmer and i was exploring c and thinking you know wow you can get 
machine level code That's it, the hard by code. compiling. Yeah. And, and using this quote higher level language. And I was down there showing him he was he was really Really into assembly language programming. He was into the demo scene and making, you know, graphics in assembly. I mean, ah, oh, pages and pages and pages of, of assembly language listings when you printed them out, which is what we had to do <laughs> if you wanted to see the whole program. <laughs> so uh, I'm down and I'm showing him C and saying, you know, look, this is a higher level language. You can be more productive. You can get more work done. And, and he was like, yeah. I no, don't want, no I don't way. Want any of this. Yeah. Nah, this assembly guy. language for me, bud. This is the only way to go. <laughs> that guy, that guy, I, I won't call his name, but he works at Microsoft today. <laughs> he, he, and after, I don't know, after a few years later, he wrote me an email and he said, you know, you were so right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have to eat my words now. You were right. <laughs> oh, this is crazy. So talking about C being a higher level language. Well, that's it, though. It was, wasn't it? And then you could go in, you can go in to, you know, assembly from C. And now we're even like, yeah, at this point now where we just, even though we're still using the C name set, you know, C sharp and things. And the things that they've done with C sharp and all these languages is, is, is incredible. And, you know, bringing the concepts of functional program, which then, you know, that's a whole other mind and paradigm to then bring that in and to think, oh, yeah, but, you know, yeah, it's insane. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like, um, you know, to, to somebody like uh, Frazier, who's been around for a while, uh, <laughs> all these changes, you know, procedural code, object-oriented code, um, uh, functional, you know, so many programming paradigms are coming along, uh, just wham, wham, wham. Who knows what will be next? You just, mm -hmm. if, you, if you don't love to learn... That's you're probably in the wrong profession yeah. if you're... That's what makes it exciting as well, the fact that it does move so fast and uh, it, it does keep you on your toes, doesn't it? Because if you don't know what you need to know, then it's kind of, you're in trouble. But it's, yeah, it's awesome. Mm. That's right. And That's the kind so of sickening true. thing is, like you say, I've been around for a while, but Ed's been around for like a fraction <laughs> of the time that I have and he knows like 7,000 times more than I know and I hate him for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ed's kind of intimidating, isn't he? No. He's talking about yeah. reading all these books, Kent Beck's book, Last yeah. uh, episode, well, I think go, it was. We don't get drunk. We like. Yeah. Uh, do you remember like that? That, you, that we were. Yeah, talking software about? craftsmanship. Yeah, so software craftsmanship. Like last time, I got drunk with Ed. We got drunk and we were talking about like. Oh, I forgot the guy's name. Uncle Uncle Bob. Uncle Bob. Yeah, Uncle Bob's legend. So yeah, oh, like, yeah. and we were talking about uh, the the software craftsmanship book, and then like in my drunken state, I got on my phone and I was like, I'm gonna buy like software craftsmanship, and I woke up at the morning and I was like, I haven't told you this before, Ed, but I actually cancelled the order because it's like I don't, I don't have time to read books. I was thinking like I the was book thinking, was like seven oh, pounds, like the book was seven pounds, so it's like it's it's not an issue for the the fact that it was like uh, I'm just gonna have this book. You're it's gonna, gonna be space. I don't like clutter in my house. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy this book. It's gonna sit at my bedside table, and I'm not gonna touch it. Uh, so there's no point in me having this book. So I cancelled the order. <laughs> but yeah, I, I do. I, I should uh, read. I should read that book. Well, you yeah. buy it online. It's an easier way then, you know. Then you no, I bought it online. That was the thing. I bought it from Amazon, and I cancelled it. Oh, you cancelled it from Amazon? Yeah, because I bought it when we were chatting. Like, oh no, no, chatting. online. I mean, buy the just book the, the book. Just the digital. Oh, the ebook. Yeah, buy the ebook yeah. then. That yeah, may be um, easier, yeah. and then read it kind of like se section by section. But then your yeah. commute, I suppose, isn't that long because you're That's in Greenwich. Is, you're lucky. is there an audio book version of it? Like I don't know. Actually, we could make mm. the audio book version. You know, yeah. it's not. It's not very code based. It's no, not, actually, there's no Jimmy code at all. It. We could buy it. Get Jimmy to read it and record it because I love Jimmy's accent. Yeah. <laughs> just so we can listen to more of Jimmy. <laughs> so That's it. Yeah, I just want to sit here and listen to Jimmy. I was thinking, write a program to read it. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. That's it. Microsoft <laughs> Sam. Just bring Sam back. You know, that's what we do. Or write a program to read anything in Jimmy's accent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, so yeah, we just need to sit you down, Jimmy, and get you to read like every word in the dictionary and like every kind of intonation <laughs> that you can possibly come up with, and then we could do, yeah, we can release this, and then, then and then Ed can write the program to select the correct <laughs> intonation and inflection. Exactly. Yeah, that would be exactly. fantastic. And then yeah, we can For all every read word. the rewards. <laughs> That'd be great. It'd be like what's the the big audio book company? Uh, or audible, audible, audible. Yeah, audible, advertise yes. on every podcast apart from ours. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we we could start our own. There we go. It's a little business. A little or business. Just sell yeah. it to them. Sell the That's program. Exactly, to them. Yeah, Amazon yeah. now. Yeah, we don't need Morgan Freeman reading books. We need Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Morgan grew up just down the road. In fact, He's really. Yeah. Oh. Well, do, uh, do you know figuratively it? speaking, you know inside it? the same state. No. Oh, cool. How big is the state though? It's probably bigger than England, isn't it? 
Um, it's uh, <laughs> it's not very wide. Probably yeah, no, uh, it's not bigger than England. I don't think. Yeah, um, probably two and a half, three hours side to side, and uh, okay, maybe six hours top to bottom. That's about the same size as England. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so pretty close. Get from yeah. like, you get from Norfolk to Bristol in what three hours, maybe? Yeah. And you could get like south coast to Scotland in six, six seven, yeah, yeah, pretty About close. The same size. District, yeah. Really. Yeah. yeah, I tell you what though, uh, Fr- Fraser, I completely agree with you. Like finding time to read is hard, but I, I started reading. I've I've been meaning to read this for years, literally years. Like I know Ed's been banging on it. Um, Spot the dog. Spot the, the dog. Yeah. <laughs> it's a classic. Uh, there's a lot you can learn about programming. <laughs> no, the uh, the Gang of Four book and yes. um, design patterns book. Yeah. And it is, it's a really kind of, um, blow my mind. And I feel really guilty for not having read it sooner because it just makes you really think about like how you just delve into projects without actually planning. Yeah. And, um, is it the original gang of football? Cause isn't, wasn't that right. C plus plus or you doing the Java head okay. first? I think the Java head first one still is good. So someone asked me this question this morning. I didn't realize that the, the original, <laughs> original design patterns book is, um, an architect's book. On building houses. Yep. <laughs> okay. So I'm not reading that book. And I don't know if that is any good for like programming. I don't know, but I, I've, I'm reading. It's, uh, it's the original when they're talking about like, um, they, they use like small talk and, uh, I'm trying to think what the other language is, but it's, it's not, they're not using Java. No, I did found like a, a free PDF, which was like going through all the design patterns in Java. So I thought it was incredible for, you know, free, but I've actually, um, but I think it is the original Gang of Four sort of developing development book. So yeah, like all the examples I use are like small talk and stuff. But a lot of stuff they talk about seems quite similar to stuff I know in Java. Like they talk about uh, linked lists and lists and all that kind of stuff. So I'm guessing a lot of concepts are similar. But I mean, the design patterns are you know you can learn if as long as you read about them and understand the concept, you can then go and take it away and use it in any language, well, that's right? It, yeah, but, any OO language, and yeah, and then there's like, I mean, I mm-hmm. think I'm sure there's now functional design pattern books coming out. Yeah, seeing as that you know become well, you know, it. exactly. I mean, what I'm reading now is already out of date, right? There's probably there's a lot no. more books. There's a lot no, more I, design patterns now. But well, um, this is the thing. There is. I don't think there is. There's modifications on them, but really, yeah. the fundament they they really did a good like job. I think they, again, the only one out of them that is a bit there is the singleton pattern. Like that's the only thing where it's just like a, you know souped up globals pretty much you know well, but and even like uh, yeah like factory pattern gets dissed quite a lot right a well, lot it's over like yeah overuse of it is kind of and and then like the builder I mean the builder one's always funny because a lot of the code reviews I do well actually mm-hmm. it's funny what K- K- Van, one of the people who came on another podcast uh, recently I used to work with he um. It, we had a code review and we'd named what one per, a person had named one of their classes something like uh, not string builder but actually string builder is a funny name for it actually but yeah. yeah like not you know like uh i don't know a car builder or something like that and it's like okay but it's not actually a builder by the by the pattern builder because mm-hmm. the builder pattern is building up you know this single object it's actually creating you know it's a factory so but builder is such an easy name but it's actually funny thinking about a string builder that they have yeah. in like c sharp but it's not actually a builder pattern. It's it's yeah. not so yeah, it's it's funny how people, you know, you kind of the, the patterns stay the same. You know, yeah. like the concrete patterns, but the way I people guess the thing that, interpret them and the thing that's really struck me, I guess, reading the book so far is like like how much a dirty word inheritance is now. And you think like inheritance oh, composition is, over inheritance, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I tweeted you about it and it obviously makes complete sense, but um you know, it's you just so it easy to a, extend, though. You get all those methods for core free. functionality in <laughs> IO, right? I mean, you know. It yeah. is, yeah. But it's it's kind of one of those things that once you're inheriting from something, it's a lot harder to decouple mm. that, you know, if yeah. you want to then get away from it. Um, whereas composition, you're able then to kind of get by the object, or the idea of IO, which is like these little bits that you're able yeah. to build up and join together. I guess on, on this topic, though, I mean, Jimmy, I mean, did you, I mean, how long did you spend in the design process or was he just like so excited and you just got on the keyboard and started smashing away or did you <laughs> take time to plan it all out or you know <clears throat> okay it's confession time <laughs> <laughs> normally i would have planned it all out but nope yeah. i confess i yeah. i just got on and started keyboarding away and uh that right. that is not normally me <laughs> like uh what was it last episode ed you were talking about the crc cards yes yes uh, I, I mean that's me 
That's me right there. I'll sit down with the CRC cards, and if I know that I've got a, a, a pretty good size application to write, or even a medium size application to write, but um, I just perceived this was going to be really something small and quick and something That's I could just knock right secret. out. That's <laughs> it, exactly. And then six months down the line, you're like, maybe this isn't as big as, you know, as small as I thought, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do, do you use a lot of UML and stuff then in your design as well? or You know, not really, no. I, I, CRC cards, yeah, but uh, no, I've never been a UML guy. No, that's and like with with like kind of throughout the. How do you kind of stay up to date? Well, what's your way of staying up to date? Is it books? Is it obviously oh, podcasts yeah. and podcasts? Yeah. You know, I'm kind of like Fraser. I I do read books. Um, what's a what's the last book? In fact, Fraser would appreciate this. The last book I read was a book on JavaScript. Oh, hey, yeah. there you go. Yeah, <laughs> I, I just wanted that. to give attribution. Um, David Herman's effective JavaScript book. Uh, hey. uh, was a, was the last one I read. Let's see if you can see that there. Yeah, yeah. And you know, it's a, it's really a good book. So um, yeah, I'm I'm kind of envious of the front end guys, I guess, since I don't get to do that as much. So yeah. Fraser, yeah. envy. <laughs> 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 yeah, us guys, you know, slinging data around, you get to do all the fancy stuff, you it's know. It's just nice exactly. seeing stuff move across the screen. When you do like an animation, it just does that. That just makes my day. Like anything that moves on the screen is just, yeah. Like I can't work with just output values, so I need this to work it, yeah, out. It's yeah, it's silly, you know, just go, oh, great, you know, the command line. Oh, it returned, <laughs> yeah. hey. I do quite, the CLI is very satisfying. Like, do you know, when you, if you spend any time working in grunt and stuff and you run like your grunt build task and stuff and you get maybe a oh, minute yeah. of like stuff happening on screen, like this is amazing. Like I've made this happen. Like, it has to be, as long as it's really visual and stuff. Creating happens, that, like, compressing yeah, that. Yeah. That's just, the thing. Like you get all these like this. words, like it's like, yeah, uglifying this file, like combining <laughs> these files and it's, and all the green yeah. and everything. It's like, it is like unit testing where it's like test pattern, you know, where you get that yeah. green dopamine. You're like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, completely. But it's the most frustrating thing in the world when it does that for a minute and then it says failed because yeah. your tests have failed and I'm like Jesus Christ well, that's, yeah. com- that's me compiling a C program pretty much yeah. it's like yeah no it's like oh, no yeah. oh. <laughs> oh, so and then you look at your watch and it's like oh it's, it's 5.25 so like if I can drag this out for five minutes and I don't have to think about it and it's fine <laughs> like, um, if I just keep running these tests hopefully it'll sort itself out but it, it won't it clearly yeah. won't it's a time but I can go home in five minutes so yeah oh yeah so true <laughs> oh but it is hard to stay up yeah, but yeah, I do read a little, but mostly it's podcast. Well, I read a little books, but I read a lot off the web. Yeah, yeah. I'm a hacker news guy, so yes. I, that's another yeah. way. So, what are your favorite podcasts? And obviously, this is your favorite. But I mean, <laughs> oh, absolutely, <laughs> Three Devs and a Maybe is my favorite. Good answer. <laughs> uh, and uh, but uh, since I started uh, uh, piddling over on the Microsoft platform, I've started listening to .NET Rocks. Oh, right. you guys talk yeah. huge yeah. about that, don't you? Yeah, like especially you, was it you, Mickey, that was saying that it's it's like phenomenal, even though you don't oh. write .NET, but it's just good for, yeah, for programming tool. It was the first one that um, Ed got me into, I think, oh, and yeah. uh, like he said to me, like you know, look, I know you're not a C sharp programmer or whatever, but you know, just take the concepts and um, yeah, I just I find the presenters are really really good and they not don't overcomplicate it, don't pretend to be anything they're not. So uh, yeah, I, I, it's a really great show in my mind it's really good i'd recommend that to anyone at any level yep. sort of beginner or whatever so yeah definitely yeah. yeah yeah and a few others some of the same ones i hear you guys talking about like full stack radio and uh the change log yeah Laravel podcast. Change log is very good yeah but that's that's it no, that's good. I mean, it is, as you say, really hard to find the time. I mean, I find, yeah, Hacker News, you can spend hours on there, oh, particularly yeah. reading the comments, and they get into some crazy, yeah, discussion. <laughs> um, you have to, they, I really have, do. I, they do, don't they? I, and they can be so mean. So mean to people. <laughs> it's like, leave, yep. it's, it's Reddit again. You know, it's like that whole slash dot thing. And yeah, no, yeah. I mean, I find, I find that, you know, I, I, read, I read a book and I do find it hard to, like, kind of, to find not find the time but maybe find the patience to read a book like i'll get into a mode where i'm like i'm gonna read this exactly. book and I'm like, i start reading it i'll put it down then i'll pick it up again yeah. and it gets yeah. into whereas you know it's quite nice that it's probably the adhd thing again where you know you're kind of oh, like I, is, yeah. I enjoy like just you know a blog post on something or yeah. talks talks is something i've really got interested oh, yeah. into now like because now i've got um the fire tv stick set up on my, my tv uh, like sometimes yeah. when i'm gonna slip like it's really sad this is really sad okay so obviously when my girlfriend's not staying around because we watch 
fun things like once like upon tonight a time. when you were in your basketball jersey well, exactly this is it you know <laughs> uh you know maybe i'll put it you know put on a nice you know go to sleep i'll watch a lecture on like probably dan you know dhh doing something or you know that and there's so much in material online it's sad so yeah i'm very envious of that though like i wish that I come home after a, a day at work and I'm like, I, I don't want to think about programming at all. Like I, so I really envy that you, you have the capacity to do but that. I think it's, it's, it is like, I mean, I get that, but then I get oh, other days when I'm just like, yeah, I don't want to sit on the yeah. computer all day and do it again. And I think it is yeah. balanced though. I think that's one thing I've learned over yes. the last year or so is balance. Um, yeah. Cause like, I know Mickey and I think it was Mickey and I have had a, a chat about your balance because you used to be yeah. like, you used to live, sleep, breathe. Yeah. It's yeah. And not like healthy. now in the last year or so you've, yeah. Kind of and it's, it's down. awesome to see. Yeah. Yeah. It, cool. It's been more Amy. like, yeah, Amy. Exactly. Settle in the back. That is exactly it. Yeah. Having Amy, a girlfriend. Yeah, that was where I was going. But yeah, um, yeah bless it us. coincides. I mean, that's even though she doesn't like your basketball it? jerseys, she doesn't like these. You know, <laughs> that's oh, she bad trait about. Yeah, we're, we're going to have to wean that out of yeah, her somehow. Cavaliers, you know, know a bit of LeBron yeah. James. Everyone loves him. You know, I've even heard of LeBron James. You have? I've heard. No, I have heard of him. He's the only basketball person I know. Yeah. No. And Michael Jordan, because there you go. Yeah, Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan still playing. Yeah. He's still, he's still playing. <laughs> Michael Jordan's still playing, you know. Is he? No, no. <laughs> he played baseball for a while, didn't he, as well? He, yeah, he yeah. had his time in the early really? 90s, and then yeah. he went back because oh. he realised, yeah, when his dad died, I think it was, when, and then he decided oh. I want to become a baseball player, realised it was actually hard to do, and he wasn't as good as, you know, he was at basketball. And then but came was back he, and was he a pro-level baseball player? Or was uh, he no, pro- still minors. He couldn't, I don't he think just he just ever kind of like got, got a hand off to majors. play baseball because of who he was? Uh, no, no, I think he was actually good enough to pro... Well, Two uh, minors, probably, but not majors. Like, right. but someone should have bought him. I mean, like, yeah, he would have been like massive money, even no matter yeah. what he's doing. It's like, oh look, he's doing, I don't know, like swimming. It's like, okay, well, it's Michael Jordan doing swimming. Okay, we're well, definitely we're going to put that on. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what it would be like, uh, Ed, if you and I went over to the front end side of life. <laughs> trying to work over there we'd be in the minors that's no, exactly you would it yeah. a lot of money no, you'd do very well no you we'd be trying to swing back. and we'd be missing every day that is exactly <laughs> it <laughs> oh dear uh, but no I mean like again thank you so much for coming on Jimmy this has been great and this has I, been awesome I, I, yeah, I've wanted to speak to you for a long time Jimmy because you're obviously we've we've been speaking to you since the early days of the podcast yeah thank you for Twitter supporting us I really appreciate it oh, like, yeah. I don't know how yeah. you I mean I how did you find out about Three Days and a Maybe it's probably one thing yeah. I'm interested to oh, ask oh gosh like, yeah hmm I don't you know I uh, I honestly do not remember how I found out. There you go. That's that's like subliminal <laughs> advertising. You know, we just people just don't remember, think they just think. Yeah. Oh, I think we should type in three dozen. Yeah, it's probably probably it was a search for uh, PHP related podcast somehow. Cool. Because I, I obviously actively look for that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. That's so cool. And also another thing I was going to say before we um, wrap up is your setup. Your actual. I know that you're an amateur, you're like amateur radio. As well, and yes. I can definitely people are going to realise. Yeah, your audio is better than ours today. Yeah, which is always great because we're like, yeah, we're the host. We should obviously have at least something. Yeah, because nice. you're sat in like a studio, and I'm on my bed with my microphone, and you've got <laughs> like your setup with a proper. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Oh well, thank you very much. So yes. You, uh, what are your What are your other shows that you contribute to? Um, in the past, I have uh, contributed to Amateur Logic TV, which is okay. A- and video like podcast. I'd like to listen to that. And that's that's about amateur radio. But uh-huh. uh, it's been uh, many episodes since uh, since I was a part of that. I I uh, in fact uh, shortly before I started <coughs> host signals. Uh, yeah, it's I took all a hiatus. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. This small project. It should only take a night. Is now your whole <laughs> life. It's like yeah, I don't do anything but this thing now. We're still a small project. So true. So true. Yes. Uh, but any any software development na- a- adventure always is this way. It's that naivety of thinking it's going to be a, a small thing to turn out. No, yes. um, and that's why. And then this is why people think outside of the software industry that we're just pessimists. It's like they really no, do. They really do. Oh yeah, they yeah. do, don't they? I think that's it. They they assume that we really do just think the worst is going to happen, but it's only because we've seen such like, bad we things know, happen. Yes. Yeah, we know. Yeah, <laughs> it's like we don't think we know that's going to happen. That's the pessimist, right? Yeah. There. <laughs> Uh, they they uh, they don't understand when you say, "Look, it's really impossible for me to give you a hard date for a deadline on this." That's it, because yeah, exactly. Yeah. Research, it's like, well, doesn't research just take it out? It's like, well, how about we don't find a re- you know? And, yeah, <laughs> um, you were saying also another thing actually. So you dealt like, do you do like the full stack then? Uh, well, uh, apart from the front end, it's like mainly de- uh, database stuff driven. 
and then the code behind that. Um, do, do you yes. like? I mean, so how, how much like experience have you had in the database side? Has it been pretty much your whole career, or is this something new to? No, pretty much my whole career, I've um, worked with some kind of relational database setup, and and you know, beginning back in the MS SQL days, and uh, mm, well, maybe not before that. I was just aware of what was around before that, but uh, but yeah, almost always some kind of database. Now I I have uh, a little full stack experience. Typically, my job goes up to the HTML layer, and uh, that's about it. I leave the CSS along, and and I love to get over and dabble in the JavaScript side because that's, you know yeah, JavaScript I mean, is I've just cool. The, that is it, yeah. isn't it? It's the hipster <laughs> way. I mean, do, do you like doing it on the uh, server side then, like with Node? Have you been trying to push? Oh yeah, yes, that's absolutely. Cool. Yeah, big Node fan. Use Node lots and lots daily, even. And uh, of course, uh, my whole setup, my whole workflow is involves Grunt, like Fraser was talking about, and uh, you know, just. Uh, SAS and converting back to CSS and JS Lin and running all those tasks with Grunt and uh, you know Node is just wow it's just yeah. fantastic. How did Absolutely. we get along without it? Yeah. <laughs> that is exactly it, isn't it? Um, and then like because with your relational database, so you're using MySQL now. What what database have you yeah. enjoyed the most? Like this is a sad sad question, but I really am interested. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know. Really, I really like MySQL a lot. Uh, is that the one I've enjoyed the most? Hmm. You know, probably so, but only probably because I've worked with it for like the last 11 years. So uh, I have used Postgres and MySQL's uh, MS SQL. Um, but here recently, I've started looking at uh, some of those graph databases. Have you ever oh, played yes. with those? Like Neo4j? Neo4, Neo4 yeah, absolutely. Oh, yes. So cool, isn't it? And uh, maybe just because it's so different, uh, it's just cool. But I haven't really gotten into it hardly at all. Is, yet. That, is that a personal project? or a, Yeah, oh, it's yeah. Just, yeah. just looking around, just, uh, just exploring to see what it's applicable to and things like that. No, that's really cool, man. Thank you. Thank you again for coming on. I really have appreciated Absolutely. it. It's been a great podcast. And, yeah, and can you can you announce for everyone where we, where they can find your product and, oh, and sure, where they can sure. find you on Twitter or Facebook or your website or uh, yeah, yeah, just pr- yeah. promote yourself to death. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh, HostSignals dot com and HostSignals in this case is spelled with a Z instead of an S. So it's plural with a Z, hostsignals.com. And uh, you can also follow us on Twitter at hostsignals. You can follow me on Twitter at uh, Jimmy D. Burrell. I think it is. <laughs> I think that's my Twitter. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's about it. But, yeah, Jimmy, it's been an absolute, absolute pleasure. I, yeah, I can't absolutely. say enough how much of a pleasure it's been having you on. It's, yeah, it's, it's been, been a pleasure really, being here. really good chatting to you. Um, oh, before we go, yeah, the competition. So the competition is over, oh. and we have a very, ah, a a very unanimous winner. It is Andrew Smith, yeah, who I believe is a Mancunian, but he's now living in Brisbane, Austra- Brisbane, Australia. I have been stalking you, Andrew. On Facebook, so <laughs> I know so exactly I, yeah, where you your are. Whole history. Yeah. So basically, yeah, I know. That, yeah, I've sent you a message saying, "Send me your address. Send me your address, and I will get you a T-shirt but straight also, in the post." Also, he's got to now take a picture with it on. Yeah, he does. Yeah, you have to take in a, the location yes, you're at on a you beach. Know, on, yeah, a beach on a beach. Something, yeah, something yeah. like that. Something you know to kind of you know, and that could be for the next. Again, he completely dominated. Uh, Jimmy, your your you know your contribution. Yeah, your contribution was amazing. <laughs> uh, I was awful. Oh, I, um, I bow. I bow <laughs> to Andrew. He, I have no <laughs> idea how he done it. It was insane. He, it's insane, like yeah, because I built the game and I couldn't get over ten k, <laughs> and he's got twenty k, and it gets progressively harder as you go as well. Like it's it it makes uh-huh. it more difficult as you go. So he's like See? fifty times better at it than I am. So yeah, Andrew, you've won a t shirt. Take a picture of yourself wearing it because that would be amazing. Um, and yeah, DM me your address and I will get it into the post you straight awesome. away. All right then. Well, Mickey, so have you got anything else to say? Uh, I, I'd like to apologise for Toby's presence on the podcast again. Is, right. I hope it's not come over. He could much, have been on maybe because yeah, because Lewis is a like, Boobay tonight. So yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, 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 and again, bringing yeah. in Kate, yeah, Kane's is on the yeah Boobay concert. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. But no, not at all. But yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Jimmy, so much for coming on. Really appreciate you giving up your spare time. So uh, yeah, it's yeah. a pleasure, Mick. Pleasure. Oh, thank you. Right, yes, yeah, so right. this has been another episode of Three Dozen Maybe, and uh, audience, we will see you next week. Goodbye. I love you all. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. You've been listening to Three Devs and a Maybe. You can contact us at contact at 3devsandamaybe.com. 
or follow us on Twitter at the number three, Devs and a Maybe.